should be working. Hi. Any second. <laughs> hey, there you Hi, are. Hi, Mike. How are you? How are you, Lena? I can't. I cannot complain. Nice. I see Beautiful that you're outside day here. in your estate I am. vineyard. I am at my estate vineyard. Yes. Nice. I am in a office upstairs in my house. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's sorry okay. I have a pretty good view. <laughs> I have a pretty good view. I can't complain. <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, welcome to uh, World of Pinot Noir. This is your. You know, this is the first year that you guys have been a part of World of Pinot Noir. It is. I'm just gonna let you tell you just right out of the gate that while the Zoom and the um, doing IG lives like this is awesome, and you know, we were able to extend World of Pinot Noir for an entire month uh, this year because of uh, I don't know for some reason I guess we have all can't travel for some reason I don't I still don't I don't, know, I, don't I haven't heard anything about that but uh, I have to say without a doubt as good as World of Pinot Noir is WAP and Wine Month is. I can't wait to hang out with you in Santa Barbara at the Bacara next year. So I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's, you know, first and foremost, I wanted to make sure that I was pronouncing your winery right. Um, and so I pronounce it Crusher. Is that right? Crusher is correct. Yes. Yes. I totally had some help from, well done. <laughs> from Davis. So big thanks to him. Um, and... So you guys have been in the farming business for decades now. Um, yeah. I've been making wine since 2016, is that right? Yeah. So we, uh, my husband and I bought the property in 1994 up in Alexander Valley. And we, um, you know, grew grapes for many, many years. And, you know, heard a lot of great things about the, the grapes from here, essentially from many winemakers. They're like, you don't know what you have here. You must do something. And we kind of started hatching a plot a long time ago. And it wasn't until about 2015 that we decided to actually do it. Um, so we're making a state Cabernet and a state red blend, um, occasionally Syrah when we have any. Um, but we also wanted to work with, uh, you know, like great Pinot Noir vineyards and we can't grow that here. Right. Um, it's very hot. So um, Platt was the obvious choice. Um, Obviously obviously <laughs> and um so fortunately uh both joe and i are like know the owner and kind of reached out to him and said we'd love to work with a little bit of your pinot noir and chardonnay would that be would that be okay and he loved the idea and he said so, get in line <laughs> <laughs> well as i said we're friends <laughs> that, nice that so. helps for flat vineyard i mean if anyone out there doesn't know flat vineyard you should look them up and yeah. uh, all your favorite Pinot Noirs. And this one will become one of them because it's amazing. Um, the Platte Vineyard, I mean, they also do, I mean, it's it's a famous vineyard. Uh, it's only like a couple miles from the ocean. I know that, but they do, I mean, they're famous for their Riesling as well, uh, which I know they're kind of pulling out a little bit, but uh, yep. they're still keeping some of it. Um, and obviously Chardonnay and, and Pinot. And Radio Couteau, which is right down the street. Um, Yep. They used to do one from there, Felia used to do one. So yeah, Platte Vineyard, very famous, well done. Yeah, there, there are quite a few. I mean, um, the people who kind of made it famous, um, David Ramey planted it um, or helped plant it essentially. And so he kind of made it like kind of the name of Platte with uh, with his brand. And then also um, Ted Lemon from Literai sure. um, are kind of the, the beginners. Um, yeah. But it's become um, very, very famous among Pinot people. Um, it makes a very distinctive Pinot Noir. Um, it's, in, I don't know if you can see this, but it's in, in the glass. It's like a, it's a very, it's a lighter color, um, right. a very delicate wine, um, but the, it has such great intensity. It, it, it's actually kind of amazing when you look at it you kind of like think nothing of it um but it's just an amazing amazing bottle of wine yeah. I mean, they're, they're incredible right and, and you've got you guys have been getting plat fruit since vintage 2016 is that 2016, right 2016 yes and so this what's out now is the 2017 am I 2017 correct? yeah right on I yeah and 2016 that. was like was so tiny yeah. um that we ended up actually our inaugural inaugural vintage was essentially magnum pairs 
because we had 25 cases of each and oh, so awesome. it, it was nothing and like it's we're still it's still what 40 cases it's tiny yeah we do very little that's awesome that you have to at least put it in magnums that's it I and mean, that's just a good business decision like i bet that is done well <laughs> yeah we just weren't sure what to do if like how do we come out with a, a bunch of 750s at that you know so magnums were fun um the 2017 uh being able to have it in 750s was is terrific um the wine is spectacular it's yeah. the great thing about plat is it ages really well um i mean it's great now um but it ages spectacularly it's amazing yeah and you guys for 2018 and 2019 fruit off there yes great that's great look forward to yeah. that in 2018 yeah. yeah no i'm looking forward to it too i've tried them and they're Pretty nice. <laughs> yes, well done. Uh, yeah, so uh, you also have a proprietary uh, Pinot Noir. Um, I do. And so that's, where's the fruit? I know it's Sonoma Coast. So what vineyards are you pulling from for that? So that's been an interesting, like we've, we've been pulling from a lot of vineyards on the Sonoma, not a lot, I mean a few. Um, but the whole point of the proprietary Pinot Noir is for a barrel selection. It's not supposed to be um, an Appalachian blend or a single vineyard. Right. Um, but what's been happening has been that the same vineyard ends up being the top four barrels. <laughs> so it's yeah. been, um, that's been Putnam. Oh, right on. Vineyard out yeah. in Annapolis for, yeah, that's, those have been the barrels that we've liked consistently. So it's accidentally been a single vineyard. Um, yeah. That's great, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't tried no, it's that, an amazing but, wine. So I, I can't wait to try it. Um, but, uh, you know, all right. So we've covered the Pinot Noirs for a second. We'll get back to the plat one, which is, again, I've had that. I've had that one of yours. Amazing. I wish I had some of it now, but I drank it all. <laughs> um, but let's just get into your story. I mean, first and foremost, you guys were grape farmers at, at first. Yep. I mean, for, for, for how long were you guys selling grapes before you decided to get into the actual wine? Oh, uh, wow. Well, um, I can't do math. Math is hard. That's okay. Uh, 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. Yeah. 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 So my, um, I've been in the wine business in some manner for 30, I'm not, 30-ish years. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> um, Nobody's my husband. Score. You're fine. Yeah. My, my husband um, was into wine and uh, actually like the way he kind of discovered um, vineyards was he was working in California when he was 20, delivering pianos in a truck up and down uh, California and pulled into a vineyard in Napa and was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I must have one. And realized oh, yes, I want a vineyard. Yes, that's that's, awesome. that's, that's what happened. <laughs> and he decided, like, you know, I want this, but I'm not gonna get this working for five dollars an hour delivering pianos. So that made him go to college, and then go to graduate school, and he managed to be able to buy this place in 1994, as I said. And um, we moved out. We we both are from Chicago, so we were nice. living there at the time and uh, decided finally to make the move out here permanently to actually be more involved in uh, 2000. Right on. So, yeah, so 94, I think, is when you guys, right? 94, yeah. Right. That's amazing. Well yeah. done. I mean, also lugging pianos for a living, <laughs> and you all of a sudden, like, it could have been. I, I assume that one, just to joke around, but it could have been like a brewery. He's like, I need to own a brewery because this job it, right now sucks. It could, it could have been that, sadly. Way to it go wasn't a brewery. The <laughs> no, like, I'm not, I, I love beer, but I'm definitely a wine person, so yeah, it's yeah, better that it's a, it's, best, it's better that, no, I, beer's great. But, yeah. <laughs> but winery, I, I love wine, so right. it's definitely more my passion. So that's great. So yeah, I mean, some of the people that have gotten you know, some pretty famous wineries have gotten fruit off you. I don't know if you want to talk about those, but you know, off your state vineyard, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think I can share some of, some of them. Uh, I don't think they would be embarrassed. Um, 
you know, we've sold um, a lot of fruit to, uh, we've sold for many years to Silver Oak uh, for their Cabernet program, obviously. Um, Lambert Bridge, um, St. Fran Francis for their reserve program. Sure. Um, and a few more that I should probably keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, I know. I, I'm glad you mentioned Silver Oak. People definitely, St. Francis as well, I want to know those. Yeah. Those friends. But yeah, I just was getting, just letting you talk about how famous your fruit is, especially the Bordeaux varieties in your estate. So yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. No, but I mean, on like, your estate too, it's not just grapes, right? There's apples. Uh, yes. Grapes, there's, I, I, you've got a plethora of fruit. And my first question is, are you making cider out of the apples? Or are, they, no. are they eating apples? <laughs> <laughs> I have like, I have such a huge project with, with the wine. I don't have time to make cider. Um, <laughs> my husband hates apples. Because uh, so, <laughs> so most of the apples. These could, be, these could be vines and we can make more money. <laughs> no, they're... they're the apples are kind of grown along the vine rows. Um, yeah. And so I'll, we have a full-time vineyard crew. So they usually just eat them. Oh, right take them so they are eat, they're, they're eating apples. They're not cider apples. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It, look, they, they, I think they can technically be cider, cider apples, but I, I, I really don't have time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to make cider. So we've got apples, uh, pomegranates, Oh, wow. Uh, lemons, oranges, um, blood oranges, olives, nectarines, a pear tree that will not bear fruit. Oh, um. so frustrating. Because that's probably all you want, right? This is one pear. No, just just like a couple would be fine. <laughs> this stinking tree. Give me a pear. Just give me one. <laughs> I put so much work into you. Yes. <laughs> pruning it and oh my gosh pruning uh, it and like here's a little like little water come on like just a pair i just awesome. want to make a tart it doesn't it doesn't require much right right so again like basically reward your your crew and your and your friends uh with that fruit every year generally not the pears being aside no, yes. so I also do, um, I get so much citrus and pomegranates that I actually do end up um, bringing a lot of them into restaurants or like locally nice. and just gifting them because I can't go through as much as I want to, I can't go through all of it. So I usually end up just bringing it to restaurants or there's a um, people who will come out here and, and pick your fruit for you and give it to people in need too. So I do that as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the Pinot Noir. So uh, 2018, is it 2019, 2020 as well for Platt? We did not do a 2020. Okay. Um, as you're probably aware, there was, there were fires here. Yeah. Um, and we felt that even though Platt was all the way out in the coast, that there was enough of a risk of um, smoke taint that we just yeah chose the smoke not. is pretty close and fresh so we just yeah. chose not to do that so yeah. um, but we'll, we're going to do it for 2021 and hopefully like way into the future because we That's we really just love the fruit from there and the wines are gorgeous right I've actually never I've been drinking a lot of uh, fruit uh, wines from from Platt but I've actually never walked it like tell us about it is it gorgeous is it yes so. It's like three or four miles from the ocean, but it's got a really interesting aspect. So it's kind of, which makes it special because it's faced, it's faced a little bit like kind of southeast, essentially. So it doesn't get blasted by the, the wind that comes off the ocean. Right. Um, and you like fairly steep hillsides, um, very sandy soil. Um, it's just it's just in this magic spot where you know, you're getting enough growing degrees every day to get it right. Um, you get the wind and you get the fog, but it's not so freezing that everything just gets, um, well, the flowers don't get blown off. Um, it doesn't get blistered by wind. Right. Um, and it, it's just a super special site and there just aren't a lot that far out there because a lot of them if they're facing they're facing west it's just wind right um yeah so it's naturally 
protected. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 I need to get out there and walk. I'd love to walk it. Um, it's it's a ama- it's an amazing. Please yeah. do. Yeah. I I'd be happy. I, I would I would love to take you out there. Oh, I'm gonna take you up on it because I've drank so much of that stuff. But it, I feel. I'll like bring that, donuts. That, yeah. <laughs> and a pair apparently if you grow. Maybe them. well maybe maybe, but if I only maybe. get one, I'm not I'm Just not one. sure I'm gonna get to you. Just one. <laughs> this stupid drink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, obviously the uh, Platts and your proprietor, you know, the two Pinots that you have, I know you have a Chardonnay as well um, mm-hmm. off Platt, which sounds Fun. amazing. Um, but, you know, so I know that you guys really wanted to make a Pinot Noir. And so did you seek out Platts first and foremost? Yes. Was that your first yeah. foray? Yes. That's so <laughs> great. Well yeah. Done. No, that was that was the immediate if we were gonna if we were gonna do great Pinot Noir and we also we also like to do things that are different here um we don't, we're not trying to copy anything or be like anyone um and so Platt was one of those places that you can kind of do something that's not your normal California Pinot Noir yeah. Not there's anything wrong with that. I love California Pinot Noir from everywhere, um, but it's just a really different wine. And I believed in the site. Um, I I love the wines from there. Um, they're kind of magical. Uh, so definitely, it was just it was if we were going to do a Pinot Noir, that was going to be one of the sites we we're going to do it from. And yeah. fortunately, we were able to get the fruit from there. So that's great. Yeah. And someone uh, in the chat has asked if you guys do a reserve. And I assume I would direct them to your proprietary blend. So the proprietary blend is like, it is like kind of the polar opposite of Platt. It's yeah. like, it's a bigger, richer um, wine. I wouldn't call it a reserve. Okay. Uh, we don't do a reserve Pinot Noir and, no, and don't probably plan to. Um, so that, that was my leading question to say that they should just buy both of them. Well, <laughs> yes. Let's sell some buy, wine here, people. Buy both. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it's really, they're really, they're just, their personalities are so different. Yeah. Um, we kind of think of our proprietary Pinot as um, almost your cab drinker's Pinot. It's, it's, as I said, it's like, it's bigger, brawnier, and the plat is a little bit more shy and takes some time to come around and is definitely lighter um, in body, but you know, has so much great intensity. Um, but it's just, it's kind of hard to pick between the two because they're just complete, they're just completely different. Right. Yeah. And if people wanted to pick up either the flat veneer uh, Pinot or your proprietary Pinot, they could go to, is it Crochere Wines? CrocheReWines.com. Dot com, right. Excellent. Yeah, go you there make now. Easy. I'm gonna go there now. I'm going to get some of that flat. More of that flat. Get ready for our walking trip. Excellent. Well, have so, to yeah. make sure you try the... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, well, have to make sure you try the flat Chardonnay as well. Because it's yeah, yeah. super spectacular. But <laughs> So, the... You know, the fact is that one of the things that I think is what I sort of end here with is that, you know, Joe, right, started as a farm worker, essentially, right? So his family did. Right. Um, yeah. So Joe's family moved up here from Mexico. His grandparents were farm workers. His father and his uncles, aunts and uncles were um, pig crops in uh, Southern California. Um, my husband has n- not done that. <laughs> right. No, I'm just saying that that generational move in one generation yeah. is, is just amazing. And, you know, I, the, the fact is that you guys have been making wine since 2016, but uh, you have a generational heritage on it. And you also yes. been providing grapes since 1994. Yeah. Years after that. But, yeah, I mean, it's just an amazing American wine story. That, it's, uh, it, it really it, it really is. Yeah. Is it, it, it's it, hard to see it. You don't see I mean, not to, to, to pick on Sonoma or Napa, but you don't hear many of those stories up there. 
Um, you see them down in the central coast, coast sometimes, but it's it's great to see that happening up, up north as well. You'll start you'll start hearing there there are a lot of Mexican American owned wineries up here. Yeah. Um, they're kind of you know you will hear from them because there are a lot of really great um, families. They've been they've been farming forever. Okay. And it's, just making the leap to making wine is not is not a it's not a vast one especially you know you, you hire the white, right winemaker and you're good yeah yeah you know once well, that's you've good. learned I mean, your trade <laughs> when, like and start farming really great fruit find the right person to make your wine and you're, you're golden yeah so and again it, it's it leaves the focus on the grind which is the most important yes um you know uh, winemakers are very important but you know, the, if, if it's coming from a tradition of great farming and a vision of that, uh, I, it, it's going to be unbeatable. So I'm really excited to see more of that coming about uh, up north as well. Yeah, no, it's 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 really important. The, the growing is in some ways the most important thing because if you're not growing great fruit, no matter how talented your winemaker is, there's only so much they can do. And so, you know, you need to make sure that your farming is meticulous and you do what needs to be done to grow great fruit rather than to just get yield. Yeah, yeah, and here, so, here. Yeah. So buy, people can buy your wines, and I know you have a, a, it's almost, it's not a waiting list, but it's close to it, it looks like. Yeah, um, it's kind of like, we ha we make so little of it. So right. the, like, for example, the plat, we, I think it was like 40 cases of this, 45. So it's, it's kind of a make a request. Yeah. Um, we've got, you know, there is some available, I think, right now. Not much. Um, hint, hint. Hint, hint. Um, you know, we, pro you know, the plat, it, like, the contract with plat is on um, acreage. So sometimes you get a ton per acre, and sometimes you get three. Um, yeah. But that's that's one of the um, things about plat is that you just don't know what you're going to get. So sometimes it's 40 cases, sometimes it's 100. Right. But it's still small, yeah. even at 100, obviously. So what I was getting at is that the idea that you can buy the wines online at crocherewines.com, but can, do you guys do tastings? Is that in your future? So we're hoping to. Um, I don't have a tasting room facility. Right. That, like I occasionally host people at my home as guests but I do not have a tasting room. Right. Yeah. So do you think maybe you one, day. <laughs> one day, one day, one day, one day. So just to, uh, somebody that I think joined maybe possibly a little later, just want to talk about where your massive estate vineyard, oh, I, I guess it's 150 acres grown uh, of grapes, um, so, vines, but you have like 500, right? Up in Alexander yeah, Valley, right? We're up in the Alexander Valley between, if anyone knows the area between Geyserville and Cloverdale. Um, kind of the northern end of Alexander Valley. We are a 500 acre par parcel. Um, we have about 150 acres planted to Bordeaux varietals and a little bit of Syrah and a tiny bit of Viognier. Um, but it's mostly Cabernet, Petit Verdot, Merlot, those sort of things. Um, and so that's kind of how we made our name up here was growing great Cabernet. Right. essentially and so that's typical for this area um as i said pinot noir is not <laughs> chardonnay right. is not right uh, it's just too hot which is why you guys sought fruit at that vineyard yeah Famous is that like we're gonna do it we're not gonna plant pinot noir or chardonnay here and try to make it work um yeah. cabernet is amazing here but yeah chardonnay and pinot noir not so much right right well, great. I think that uh, that covers it. Again, just want to tell people that they can go to crocherewines.com and get this Platte Vineyard and also the proprietary Pinot Noir. Uh, they also have a Platte Vineyard Chardonnay, which, uh, again, is supposed to be amazing. I have yet to try it, but I guarantee it, that vineyard and this and this outfit is going to be dynamite. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, Elena, what, what else are we missing? I don't know. Well, just thank you so much for inviting us. We're so excited to be part of uh, World of Pinot Noir for the first time and looking forward to many more years. Yeah, we'll see you in Santa Barbara next March. I want to see so. how, if the pear doesn't bear fruit, at least the pear tree doesn't bear fruit. 
Bring us a pomegranate or, or two. I'll, I, pr I promise to bring you some piece of fruit next year. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, Elena, I think we're going to sign off. Thank you so much. For Thank your you time. very much. And uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.